Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Google Nexus 4, the latest and greatest benchmark phone from Google. So this replaces the Galaxy Nexus sourced by Samsung, so Google has partnered with LG on this phone, and it's basically the Optimus G from LG, uh, but repackaged for Google. So the Nexus basically means that this is Android, pure Android. This is no skin, there's no touch whiz, there's no sense UI, this is just Google. This is as Google intended. Also, Nexus means that this will get the latest updates every time they roll out. So you don't have to wait around for a carrier or for another manufacturer to push out the update to your phone. So this is launching with Android 4.2, which is still Jelly Bean, but has added some additional features, which we'll cover in this video. Now, spec-wise, we have a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon processor. We have two gigs of RAM, and we have two storage options. We have eight gig or 16 gig, and there is no expandable storage here, so you can't add an SD card to bump up the storage. So, you probably want to go with the larger size. Now, eight gig starts you off at $300. And for 16 gig, you can get that at $350 at the Play Store, and that's unlocked. So that's a good, uh, quite a good deal for a really high-end phone. Now this does not have LTE 4G, so you're gonna have to make do with HSPA Plus on GSM networks in the United States. That means AT&T or T-Mobile. On the back, we see some of its major features highlighted, including the fact that this is totally wireless, so we do have NFC technology as well as wireless charging. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look around. So we have this little sleeve to pull up, and we have the box within a box. And we're gonna have to cut some seals here to get inside. All right, so we cut those seals, gonna drop it. And there is our very black Nexus 4. So let's take a look around. All right, so let's just lift this out. And you can see the Nexus 4 there with that very sparkly back panel. We're gonna take a look at that in just a minute. While we take a look at the package contents, we have that little tray here. Uh, inside we have our literature. So let's take a look to see what we get inside that packet. All right, so we have our quick start guide, which tells us a little bit about the phone in two different languages, English or Spanish, and we have our safety and warranty information. We also have our USB charging cable, which is a micro USB. We have a little SIM ejection tool here, and we have our USB wall adapter for charging the phone. Now with the plastic removed, you can see we have that LG branding. All right, getting back to the phone, you can see it's covered in plastic. So let's go ahead and peel this off. You can see that the plastic actually indicates the functions of the buttons. So let's go ahead and peel this off. All right, on the back, we got one more piece. And there we go. All right, with everything booted up, we can go ahead and take a look around the device. So here we have that 4.7 inch IPS plus display. This is LCD, uh, replacing that AMOLED display from the Galaxy Nexus. So this gives us a much higher screen resolution of 1280 by 768, which is good for 320 PPI. This is right up there with the iPhone's resolution, but over a larger screen. Now, because this is a Nexus device, we do have on-screen Android controls rather than capacitive touch buttons on the bezel like a lot of manufacturers tend to do. Uh, actually, down here is a notification light, which most Nexus devices also have, which lets you know if there's something going on in the background, whether you have a, a Facebook update or email or that sort of thing. Now, up top, we'll find our earpiece, which is at the very edge of the glass, which I think looks pretty sharp. You can also see we have a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera, which is good for 720p video. And if you look really closely on the left, you'll see some uh, light sensors, ambient light sensors, and proximity sensors. Now, if you look at the edge of the glass, we have this chrome bezel, and the glass actually sort of curves to meet it. So it kind of has a nice feeling to it when you roll your finger across the edge of it. It feels very smooth and seamless. Almost looks like, almost feels like the glass is wrapping the edge of the phone. On the left side, we have our volume rocker, as well as a SIM tray here. And you can see a little port here for ejecting the SIM. Toward the bottom, we have our micro USB port for charging. We have a microphone, as well as these two screws to open up the device. On the top, we have a headphone jack as well as another microphone. On the other side, we have our sleep wake or power on and off button. Now also on the back, you'll find that stippled pattern. So there's kind of an etched pattern underneath the glass which picks up light and reflects it. it almost looks like, the, like it's another screen, like it's active. Uh, so I think it's actually a very nice effect, very nice detail. On the back, you can see we have an eight megapixel autofocusing uh, camera, which is backside illuminated, very similar to the iPhones. Uh, this also uh, supports face detection, autofocusing, auto exposure, and all those traditional things we're used to with phone cameras. We also have an LED flash right below that. We have our Nexus branding. Toward the bottom, we have our LG branding, as well as a little speaker right here. Now, Android 4.2 makes some of the biggest changes on the lock screen. So on the lock screen, you can now swipe to the left to launch the camera app. And there's some changes to the camera app, which we'll explore a bit later. 
You can also add widgets here. So we have full screen widgets. If you swipe left, you can add one. You can see we have uh, some selections here. So we're going to add my Gmail and we're going to add my inbox here. Now there's a little bug here. In order for it to resize to the full screen, you have to close it and lock, or lock it and wake it up again. So if you swipe, you can see we now have our full screen email widget here, which I can read. And you can add another widget. You can keep adding widgets here. Uh, so let's go to calendar. Again, lock it, wake it back up, and it should be in its right place. There we go. You can also remove them just by tapping and holding them and taking them up to remove. Again, very similar to the home screen. You also have a clock here, which gives you some controls like your alarm settings here. So you can set your alarms. You can also select a timer here, another timer. And so you get some quick controls from the lock screen. And of course, you can still launch Google Now from the lock screen. So you get a little circle here and just swipe up. It takes you right to Google Now. Now 4.2 also adds this quick settings control up here. So it gives you access to things like your brightness control settings, your battery indicator, Bluetooth on and off, airplane mode, also your network settings. Uh, so for example, if we tap brightness here, we can control our brightness on screen right here, or we can set it to auto. Now as for the stock interface here, you can see that they've given us some widgets here. So on, we have the My Library, which will aggregate your Google Library that includes things like your books, music, movies, etc. So it all appears in this app. You can tap on any one of them to jump right to it. We have a clock here. We have a folder full of Google apps. So plenty of apps here. So play magazines, play books, play movies, play music, YouTube, Google Talk, calendaring. Uh, we also have our contacts, Play Store maps, etc. We have our Play Store right on the home screen. Uh, we also have this recommended app or recommended widget here for recommending content from the Play Store. And you have room to grow. And of course, you can tap on the app drawer to get to more apps such as Google Wallets, Movie Studio, Navigation, and etc. Now the camera app has some major changes here. So for example, if we tap and focus, you can see we get a little animation here, which indicates the fact that the camera is focusing. So you'll see green for focus, red for not focused yet. Uh, you can also tap and hold to get to your settings. So instead of pressing the settings button here, you can quickly access them. So you can switch your camera, you can switch on HDR, you can change your flash settings. So you can scroll to flash auto or flash on. Uh, you can also go to your exposure compensation here, so you can change your exposure. Uh, you can also go to settings here, so that'll launch your settings, and you can select scene mode to auto, store location, picture size, 8 megapixels, and if you tap on any one of them, you can go ahead and change them as you want. You can also activate that just by tapping the right corner here, and that'll bring up the same controller. Now, one of the biggest new features with Android 4.2 is sphere mode. So in addition to panorama, video, and still mode, you now have sphere mode, which uses the gyroscope and accelerometer and those other sensors in the phone to allow you to take a full 360-degree photo of wherever you are. So basically, you take a bunch of still photos and it kind of coaches you along. So all you have to do is position the camera uh, along those blue dots, and it will automatically take the photo for you. And as you do so, it knits them together. And you can also hit this back button to undo it. You can see the back button in the upper left or upper right corner. Uh, and uh, that will undo the picture and you can take another one. And all you have to do is hit the stop button and it will knit it all together for you and create a fairly seamless picture, although it's not always perfect, but it works pretty well. And you can go ahead and take a look around the photo uh, in the photo gallery. Now the Nexus 4 is actually pretty similar in footprint to the uh, Galaxy Nexus, but we do have a larger screen size. Obviously it's bigger than the iPhone 5, not as big as the, as the GS3. The GS3 has that 4.8 inch screen. And of course we have the Note 2, which is an insanely large phone. Uh, but uh, you do of course get the same updates on the Nexus that you do on the Nexus 4. We just have less powerful hardware and certainly not that awesome 8 megapixel camera. So in conclusion, I'm definitely impressed with the Galaxy Nexus 4 so far. I really like the design. I love the feel of the glass back panel with this textured plastic along the side. It feels very nice to handle. Uh, we also have that curved glass edge, which feels very nice. And I love the pure Google Android experience. There are a lot of features here uh, that are uncluttered by things like TouchWiz UX and all of that sort of thing. Some, sometimes that stuff adds additional features, but most of the time it gets in the way. And it's also nice to have a phone that's always updated with the latest version of Android. And Android 4.2 is definitely impressive software. So that's going to do for me in this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.